Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. Ice Spire Hold Ice Spire Hold is where adventurers can expect to find Cryovane if they haven't defeated the Young White Dragon elsewhere. This location is designed for characters of 6th level, though lower level characters can defeat the dragon if they're cunning and cautious. Location Overview Ice Spire Hold is a stone fortress perched on the icy northeast spur of Ice Spire Peak. A warlord named Delsendra Amzar built the stronghold and dwelled there for many years while she and her soldiers kept the orcs of Sword Mountains in check. When supply lines were cut off by heavy snow and blizzards during a brutal winter, Delzendra and her followers starved to death. Orcs later took over the fortress, which was damaged by an earthquake ten years ago and never repaired. When Cryovane decided to make Ice Spire hold its lair, it stormed the fortress through the crumbled southwest section and ate several orcs before settling on the roof. With a terrible roar, the gorged dragon drove the remaining orcs out of Ice Spire Hold. Recently, evil mercenaries calling themselves the Stone Cold Reavers infiltrated the gatehouse and escaped Cryovane's notice. They assume, incorrectly, that the dragon has amassed a hoard and hidden it in the fortress. The next time the dragon flies off, they plan to steal it. They treat adventurers as they would any competitors, either trying to scare them off or killing them. Ice Spire Hold Features Ice Spire Hold is situated at an altitude of 2,500 feet and surrounded by sheer icy cliffs. Arrow Slits When using an arrow slit for protection, a creature gains three quarters cover as described in the rulebook against outside threats. A medium character can't squeeze through an arrow slit, but a small character can with a successful DC-10 dexterity acrobatics check. Ceilings Rooms and passageways in the gatehouse and fortress have 15 foot high arch ceilings. Ceilings in the undercroft are 8 feet high and flat. Doors Normal doors are made of wood fitted with rusty iron handles and hinges. Secret doors are made of stone and blend in with the surrounding walls. Finding a secret door requires a search of the wall and a successful DC-15 wisdom perception check. Light. The interior areas with no natural light to illuminate them are completely dark. Temperature. The temperature is slightly above freezing during the day and plunges at night. Whenever the temperature is at or below 0 degrees Fahrenheit, a creature exposed to the cold must make a DC-10 constitution saving throw at the end of each hour. Creatures with resistance or immunity to cold damage automatically succeed on the saving throw, as do creatures wearing cold weather gear and creatures naturally adapted to cold climates. On a failed saving throw, the creature has disadvantage on ability checks, attack rolls, and saving throws, and its speed is halved. The creature freezes to death if it suffers these effects for six consecutive hours. These effects end on the creature after it spends at least an hour in a place of warmth. Finding Ice Spire Hold Ice Spire Hold is so tucked away in the mountains that few people know of its existence, let alone anything about its history or current state. Characters might learn of it after experiencing a vision at the Shrine of Savras, or they might search for it on their own. In the latter case, let players use the poster map of the Sword Coast to plot a search. Ice Spire Hold is marked on the Dungeon Master's map. The characters can spot Ice Spire Hold if they come within one hex of it. If the characters are ready to confront the dragon, but need help finding its lair, Use one of the following hooks to get them to Ice Spire Hold. Captured Orc A dozen orcs attack Fandolin. If the characters are not present during the attack, the townsfolk repel the orcs but suffer losses. One wounded orc is captured alive. This orc speaks common and knows where the dragon's lair is. The characters can also capture an orc themselves and get the information they need from it. Timora's Luck a sidekick or friendly non-player character suggests that the characters pray for Timora's blessing at the Shrine of Luck. If one or more characters do so, Timora's blessing comes after a long rest 
when a mysterious cloaked man arrives in town riding a horse to gather supplies for his companions. The man's name is Dobbin Noreth, a neutral evil member of the Stone Cold Reavers as described previously. Both he and the horses know the way to the dragon's lair, having come from there. Dobbin's steed is a retired, well-behaved racehorse named Fourleaf Clover. Travel to Ice Spire Hold Ice Spire Hold is more than 30 miles from Phandalin. En route to the dragon's lair, the characters have the following encounter. Frozen Ogre Set the scene by describing the following. As you make your way across the cold, wind-blown foothills of the Sword Mountains, you happen upon a large, prone creature frozen in ice. The frozen creature is an ogre that the white dragon killed with its cold breath. The ogre's corpse was too big to carry off, so the dragon left it. A character who examines the scene closely and succeeds on a DC-15 wisdom survival check can ascertain that the ogre was killed within the past 24 hours. The cold of the foothills has kept the ice from thawing. Frozen in the ice with the ogre is a hefty sack, but it can't be reached or searched until the characters chip or melt away the ice that covers it. The sack contains a rusty dwarven helm, two halves of a splintered wooden shield, a tumbleweed, a crumpled up cowboy hat, and a sackcloth doll in desperate need of restitching. Treasure If the characters are low on healing magic, they find three potions of healings in the ogre's sack, along with the worthless items as previously described. Give the players three potions of healing cards, or they can reference them in the equipment's item listing. Arrival As the characters approach I Spire Hold, read aloud the following to the players. Clouds partly obscure a stone fortress situated atop an icy spur of a jagged snow-covered mountain that you recognize as I Spire Peak. A landmark so enormous as to be visible from Phandalin on a clear day. The mountain dwarfs the fortress, which consists of two separate structures joined together by a stone bridge. A narrow winding path corkscrews up the mountainside to the smaller of the two structures and appears to be the only safe way to reach it by land. It's an unwelcome path, but not as unwelcome as the cold, howling wind that buffers you. If Cryovane is alive, the young white dragon is sleeping on the rooftop of the main fortress in Area H20, where it can enjoy the cold mountain air while surveying its domain from over the battlements. It sleeps in a 10-foot square area in the middle of the roof, away from obstacles, and awakes if one of the following things occurs. The dragon is targeted by a spell or takes damage. Someone or something makes a noise loud enough to interrupt the dragon's slumber. Noises that qualify include a clap of a thunder wave spell, sounds of combat in an area not completely sealed off from the outside by doors, or a whisper in the dragon's ear. If the dragon realizes intruders are near, but can't determine their whereabouts, it lets out a roar and takes to the air. As it circles the fortress, it glances around for signs of intrusion. If it finds nothing to attack, it returns to the rooftop and waits for intruders to come to it. The dragon is small enough so that it can squeeze through doorways and passageways, but it needs an incentive to enter the fortress because it dislikes confined spaces. Like most white dragons, Cryovane is slow-witted and easily baited. The howling of the wind prevents Cryovane from hearing intruders who remain relatively quiet. The wind also silences the characters as they follow the icy path in Area H1, that leads to and from the gatehouse, areas H2 through to H6. Ice Spire Hold Locations The following locations are keyed to the map of Ice Spire Hold. Area H1 Narrow Trail This narrow trail clings to the mountainside as it twists around and up to the gatehouse. Tracks from horses coming and going along the trail are clearly visible. Characters must traverse the trail in a single file. If there's more than one character, 
determine their marching order and how far apart they're spaced in case it becomes relevant. The trail is safe, though a 20 foot long stretch of it is buried under rubble that is difficult to rain as described in the rule book. Reaching the gatehouse. The trail ends at the outer doors of a gatehouse. These doors can be barred shut from within, but its heavy wooden crossbar isn't in place when the characters arrive. They must let themselves in, as no one answers the door if they knock. The mercenary stationed in Area H6 watches the trail and alerts her companions in Area H4 if she sees strangers approaching the gatehouse. Careful not to wake the dragon, the mercenaries allow characters to enter the gatehouse unchallenged. See the Stone Cold Reavers section for more information. Area H2 Stables Four saddled riding horses are kept in these stalls. A fifth stall stands empty. The horses belong to the mercenaries in Area H4 and Area H6. Area H3 Storage This room contains empty wooden barrels and crates that are so old and brittle they fall apart if disturbed. Stone Cold Reavers The Stone Cold Reavers are neutral evil human veterans who speak common when they can't find work or sell swords, they resort to brigandry and thievery. After spotting the white dragon, they decided to follow it back to its lair. They are now waiting for it to go hunting so they can plunder Ice Spire Hole during its absence. Until the dragon leaves, the Reavers do everything they can to avoid attracting its attention. If the characters kill the dragon elsewhere, assume that the mercenaries searched the fortress, found nothing, and are now angrily waiting for a companion named Dobbin Nareth to return with supplies, as described with Timora's luck. The Reavers threaten the characters with bodily harm to scare them away, turning to violence if their threats fall on deaf ears. If the characters try to bribe them, the mercenaries realize that it would be easier to rob the characters than accept the bribe. If two or more Reavers are killed or incapacitated, the others stand down and try to negotiate a truce to ensure their own survival. Characters encounter the following four Stone Cold Reavers in Ice Spire Hold. Celine Wintermoon The leader of the Stone Cold Reavers is a lean, brash woman who hails from Neverwinter and keeps her red hair pulled back in a ponytail. Celine enjoys taking risks, living as though each day will be her last. She lies compulsively and always assumes she's being lied to. Runa Vokdota A muscular woman with black hair and cold blue eyes, Runa hails from Icewind Dale far to the north. A lifetime of sunless days and frigid nights falsely taught her that cruelty is natural, not evil. Runa speaks few words, but is armed with a biting sense of humour. Bracchus Elspar an unshapely man whose best years are behind him. Bracchus is an opportunist who likes following orders, as it frees his mind to think about retirement and dogs, two topics he can't stop talking about. Jabal the Orcbiter Jabal is a rugged, sullen brute with a criminal past that never manages to catch up with him. He's good at scaring people, caving in skulls and tending to the horses, around which he seems more at ease. Area H4 Gatehouse Barracks Wooden cots lie in broken heaps against the wall, leaving a clear space in the middle of the room where the stone-cold reavers have laid out bedrolls and other gear. If warned that strangers are near, all the mercenaries greet the new arrivals in the open area between this room and the stables. If the characters reach this area without being spotted, Celine Wintermoon sits on a stool and sings quietly to herself while sharpening a knife. Sleeping under the threadbare blankets nearby are Bracchus Elspar and Jabal the Orcbiter, as described in the Cold Reavers section. The mercenaries' supplies include enough water and rations to sustain four people for one day. Area H5, Smithy. An anvil rests on the floor near a fireplace that hasn't been lit in years. To one side of the hearth is a bellows that's so old it falls apart if handled. Scattered about the floor are rusty tools and old horseshoes. Area H6, 
Barbican. Arrow slits look down the trail that winds down the gatehouse, and an unlit fireplace stands to the south. Runa Vokdotir, as described in the Stone Cold Reaver section, uses the arrow slits to watch the trail. If she sees strangers, Runa leaves the room and alerts her companions in Area H4. Area H7, Stone Bridge and Iron Bell. This solid stone bridge spans the 35 foot gap between the gatehouse and the main fortress, 50 feet above the trail that passes underneath it. The bridge is edged by three foot high stone railings. Mounted to the fortress wall north of the door to area H8 is an iron bell with a short rusty chain dangling from it. Ringing the bell wakes the dragon in area H20. The door to area H8 stands ajar, its crossbar broken. Damage to the doors suggests it was forced open at some point. Area H8, Fortress Entrance. This short, empty corridor has arrow slits in the north and southern walls. Area H9, Outer Defenses. These cold, empty halls are hidden behind secret doors and have arrow slits along their outer walls. The orcs never entered or inhabited these areas. Area H10, Rubble. Years ago, an earthquake caused two corners of the fortress to collapse in great piles of rubble. This rubble is difficult to rain as described in the rulebook. Area H11, Abandoned Guard Post. Between piles of rubble stands an empty hall with arrow slits lining the outer wall. Cryovain smashed through the east door to get inside, but found nothing of interest here. Area H12, Audience Chamber. Three Sturges flutter anxiously about this cold, dismal hall. The Sturges are thirsty for blood, and heedlessly attack any warm-blooded creatures that attempt to cross the room. Shields, weapons, and tapestries once festooned the walls here, but the orcs tore down and destroyed the decor. A dozen humanoid skeletons in rusty armor lie scattered amid the debris, all died of hunger. Painted on the stone floor is a ten-foot diameter shield-shaped crest that features a black tower being struck by a gold bolt of lightning, the emblem of the warlord, Delsendra Amzar. Secret Door This room has two secret doors. The east secret door pushes open to reveal area H9. The west secret door pulls open to reveal a three-foot wide staircase descending ten feet to area H21. Cryovane is too big to enter this staircase. Area H13, Dining Room. Orcs destroyed everything in this room, going as far to pull down a pair of chandeliers that once hung by chains from the ceilings. Smashed furnishings, including a long wooden dining table and a dozen wooden chairs, lying in a sooty fireplace, is the stuffed and mounted head of a large white wolf with glassy blue eyes. The head once hung from hooks above the mantelpiece. Area H14. Kitchen. The orcs trash this room, destroying its furnishings and scattering debris everywhere. A cold breeze blows out of the twin fireplace built into the south wall. Area H15. Pantry. This room has been ransacked, leaving nothing but smashed shelves, broken barrels, torn sacks, and other detritus lying about. Amid the detritus, the characters find the skeletal remains of a male humanoid clad in a rusty breastplate. On the verge of starvation, this guard was killed trying to steal rations. Area H16, Armory. Weapon racks that once stood against the north and south walls lie smashed on the floors amidst the remains of wooden mannequins. Rusty hooks on the walls once held armor, shields, and helms. Area H-17, Warlord's Quarters. As her soldiers were dying from starvation, Delsendra Amzar was forced to quell a revolt by a handful of followers. After slaying them, the Warlord took her own life by drinking poison from a goblet. Skeletons scattered about the room testify to these events. Three humanoid skeletons in rusty suits of chain mail 
lie on the floor near rusty longswords. A fourth humanoid skeleton in rusty plate armor lies slumped in a chair that faces the fireplace. A steel goblet lies on the floor between the legs of the chair. The orc warrior chief stole the dead warlord's great axe, which the characters can find in area H19. In the middle of the room stands a sturdy oak table, around which Delcendra and her officers would plan battles. Tiny carved wooden figures of soldierines are strewn about, as are the torn up remains of old maps. Secret Door The secret door in the east wall pulls open to reveal a three foot wide staircase that descends ten feet to area H21. Cryovane is too big to enter the staircase. Orc Barracks Orcs have long laired here, as evidenced by the filth in this room. The furnishings that were once here have all been burned in the fireplace. Characters can chart the dragon's rampage through the fortress by following a series of smashed doors up the stairwell to the east and to areas H19 and H20. Treasure Characters who search through the filth find a leather sack containing 450 copper pieces and 182 silver pieces, and a cracked spyglass worth 100 gold pieces. Area H19 Orc War Chief's Lair Kra, the Orc War Chief, dwelled here until Cryovane ate him. All that remains of Kra is a severed right hand still clutching the half of an elegant looking non magical great axe, which the War Chief found in Area H17. The room is decorated with the spoils of war, including impressive looking furniture that was mostly destroyed when Cryovane attacked. Also heaped about the room are furs, antlers and the rotting heads of Kra's enemy, dwarves, humans and rival orcs mostly, as well as other trophies. Treasure Characters who search the room find an ornate wooden chair missing one of its arms. Crafted by the Sea Elves as a gift to their land-dwelling cousins, it has six branches of red coral worked into its design. The branches can be detached and are worth 25 gold pieces each. Area H20 Roof If the characters haven't defeated Cryovane yet, the final encounter with the young white dragon occurs here as it stubbornly defends its new home. The rooftop is enclosed by a three-foot-high battlement, except in the corners where the walls have collapsed. Cylindrical stone chimneys jut five feet above the rooftop, but are too narrow even for a small character to squeeze through. These chimneys connect to the fireplaces in area H12, H13, H14, and H17. Slippery Ice Slippery ice covers the rooftop, the ice is difficult terrain as described in the rulebook. When a creature other than Cryovane moves on the ice for the first time on a turn, it must succeed on a DC-10 dexterity acrobatics check or fall prone. Area H21 Undercroft This empty room is deathly cold. Chiseled into the lintel above each door is the word CRIPS in common. Area H22 Crypts. These rough hewn passageways contain unmarked stone caskets in alcoves. Sealed within each casket are the bones, rusty armor, and rusty weapons of warriors who fell in battle under Delcendra Amzir's command. Area H23 Empty Crypt and Secret Exit. Of the five unmarked stone caskets in this tomb, four are empty. The middle casket contains a dismantled toboggan that takes 10 minutes to assemble. The toboggan was designed for barreling down the mountainside, a last ditch escape route that was never used. One way secret door. The secret door in the south wall is designed so that it can only be opened from inside the room by pulling on a hidden handle. A knock spell or similar magic can open it from the outside. The door opens onto a ledge overlooking an icy mountain slope. 